Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create user accounts for other people in your app, send them an email, and have them come back into your app to log in. So let me just do a quick demo here, and I'll just create this user Bobby and that, and we'll the app will send him an email. Now I've already actually got this other user here. His name is Sam. And what's going to happen is get a, a link here. And this link is actually going to come to this page here, which is the index page. And let me just go back over here and grab the temporary password. And actually, I need to log this person out first and Sam, and then type this in, log in. And we get a pop up here new account password. So, the first time that a user comes into your app, they're going to be required to change their, their password. So, type in their existing or their temporary password, and they have been updated. All right, so now let's get into the design of how we did this. But first, uh, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and videos like this. Um, that helps let me know that uh, what I'm delivering is providing you value. And also subscribe so then you get uh, notified for upcoming videos that I'll be making. So let's get into the design here. I've got some other things going on from earlier design videos, but for this purpose here, down on the bottom, I've just got this simple group. Um, the reason why I have a group is because you'll see in a moment, I'm going to reset the inputs for the group. But uh, text field here, just a simple text field saying create a user and email invite and enter their email below. And then I've got an input here. And that is of type email. So I'm going to make our choices, make it for type email, in that the input should not be empty. So make sure you click that. And then their first name. And then that's also an input field just of type text. Also, the input should not be empty. Now, I just created these two simple fields. You need an email, of course. Uh, for a contact's first name, you could have had their last name as well in, in whatever uh, sort of information. Let me just quickly show you if you're not familiar with the text fields. So I went over here for the elements in text and just typed in you know, username, whatever it may be. And then for the input field over here, scroll down a bit and input forms, input like that, and then content email should not be empty. And so that's basically all you have to do for the inputs here. And then I have this button for inviting the contacts. So I'm just going to double click on that, get this pop up. And I have a one conditional. It's kind of a standard thing. When um, it's hovered, I just change the background color to, um, uh, to green here. And then also I just take a look at the input, uh, see if the input is, make sure that it's not empty. Uh, if it is empty, then I won't turn it uh, green, but, uh, or rather, if it is empty, um, it won't turn to green. If it's got a uh, data in it, then it will go and turn green. Jump over to the workflow. And okay, so for the workflow here, I've got two different workflows when the button is pressed. So let me walk through this. So for this first one, I have this only one condition. So when the button's pushed, Bubble's going to take a look. It's going to do this search, and it's going to take a look to see if the email that I've entered, uh, or if there's an email within my Bubble database, if it's equal to that email that I entered into that uh, input just a moment ago. And if the count is zero, then I want to go and execute this workflow. Now I'm just going to jump over here. And I have a similar search. If the email, if there's an email in my database that equals the value from the input, 
um, if the count is greater than zero, okay, then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna run this workflow, okay? So basically what this is doing is this conditional here or this search is basically seeing, do I have this person already into my database? If so, then run this workflow. In this workflow, which I'll get to in a moment, it basically doesn't allow you to create a new user because the user is already in your database. For this one here, when the count is zero, that means I don't have that user in the database, so I'm gonna go and run this workflow. So while I'm on this one, let's go through it. And the first step we're gonna do is create an account for someone else. So again, in your app, you wanna create accounts for other users and then send the email. So this step here is creating that account for somebody else. And we're using that input emails value. Uh, return user if the account already exists. Uh, I actually checked this off, but as I was going through some testing and so forth, I noticed there was a um, kind of a, a gap in Bubble's logic here, which is why I had to have these uh, only whens to make sure that the gap was closed. And I'll get to that in just a moment. And then I have the first name, uh, input users, first name value. So basically taking that input value and assigning it to first name. The next step here is we want to assign a temporary password. And so for that, we're taking the results from step one, which is the user we just created, and we are assigning a temp password. And you'll notice you don't see what the temp password is here. Um, that's just part of the way Bubble works. Next step, send the email. So I'm taking the, again, the email uh, value, and I wanna have a different reply to address. And so basically, instead of some generic return to uh, reply to address, for this one, I'm using the current user's email. So when I, as the owner of the app, go and send this email out to uh, people I wanna bring into the app, I'm gonna use my email as the re reply to email. And then the center name, just for my first name and last name. For this one, just for test purposes, I put uh, my contact information there. Subject, uh, just to show that, you know, hi, the name of the person, and then join this cool app. And then in the body of the app here, I'm actually gonna go to Rich Text Editor, maybe a little easier. So I just have some wording in here, hi, and then this is actually a dynamic value here, the input of the uh, first name of the user, it's sending us messenger app, and then their username is, and then the username is their email address. The temp password is the result from step two. So we can put that right inside of the email to the user. I'm just gonna jump for a second over here so you can see, so the username, and then the temporary password right here. And then I'm just gonna jump back to click on this link because this is a, a link here. And basically what we have is on this link, now I'm gonna jump back out of here because I wanna show you what the link is. So it's basically in brackets, URL equals, and then the URL is here. And this goes to the landing page, the, the index page. And I've got a closed bracket, right? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see this closed bracket right there. And then it's got this link, okay? Now this is an important th part of it. So this link is actually the text that I want the user to see, okay? I could have put, instead of this link, I could have put landing page. And on the email here, it would have said landing page. And then I've got the close uh, or the brackets again, the slash URL and so forth. So that is basically how I take this, uh, the uh, website link, the URL, and I give it a value of this link. So it shows up in here and it's now some ugly looking URL. And then after that, I reset the group. So back to what I was mentioning a few moments ago is that I put this all into a group, create user and email invite, so that when I get to this workflow here, I can do the reset of the data. And then I have the show message of the alert. So once the message is sent, I have this alert that pops up and I'll show that into a moment. 
So that's basically this workflow. Let me just quickly go through and show you. So for creating an account, you go under account and then create an account for someone else. And then went through again, input value for the email and then the first name. So this is just basically in my database, I have um, different data fields. And so for this one, first name, and then you fill in the data that way. So that's how you get this step. The next step, assigned temp password. Again, account, assign temp password, user. And this is gonna be a result from step one, because in step one, we're creating the user. So that's the user that I want to be using with and creating a temp password for. And that's it for that step. Sending email, okay, email, send email. And then in here, it's just, again, simply filling in the fields. So send email, okay, so I use the input for that one. Input create user email, value, specify different return address. So again, you can do that current user email wherever email, there we go. Sender name and fill in the rest of it and so forth. I'm not gonna go through this in, in detail here, um, but you can see all of the different uh, dynamics with the, in the blue here, the dynamic values. And then reset group, so that's under element actions, and then reset data. And then I pick the group, and that's that. Show messages, so again, under element action, and then show message, and then invite sent. So these values here, so fading in, fading out, the hold. So this basically shows how quickly, and in, in this is in uh, milliseconds, so half a second to fade in for the, the pop-up, if you will, for the alert. It stays visible for two seconds, and then it's a transition uh, to disappear within half a second. So that's basically it for this workflow. On this workflow, when we already have a user in the database, all I have here is reset data, similar to the step that we just went to to reset the data for that group. And then similarly, um, the invite, uh, the show the message. Now note here, Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through this one because this is a little bit different than the other workflow. Show message. So I'm going to use that same element for the alarm. And then see this? Change the alert message. So now I can type um, user already exists. So this way I can actually use the same alert over and over and based on the workflow, I can go and just change what the message is. So that's something kind of nice that uh, Bubble does so you don't have to end up creating a lot of different uh, alerts if you don't want to. Uh, let's see, the other thing on here, again, for when the button is clicked, um, the search for this, let me just kind of do a copy. So if you, the one thing also that you may not be aware of, so I'm uh, right clicking or if on the Mac, uh, on the, the uh, pad here with two fingers, clicking on that, copying, and then doing the same thing for pasting. And you see that I've got a copy of it now. And so for this one, all I'm doing is start from, from uh, scratch, do a search for, again, user. I'm not going to go and add the constraint, but I want to show you here that you want to pick on count. So when you see the more, the count, and then is, and then zero, or greater than uh, zero. So that's how you set that up. I'm just going to delete that. Okay, now that is how you set up the workflows for this. And I do want to show you the uh, alert. 
Uh, where is my alert? Alert invite sent. And for the alerts, they're down here at the... Where are the alerts? Actually, they're at the top, aren't they? Alerts. Where is the alert? Right here. Alert. So that's how I pick it. And that's how you get the alert. So the only thing I did was I just added some simple text in there. Okay, now the other thing that I wanted to show you is now I need to do a page refresh here. Um, and so we had the user Sam. Sam. That was the user we were just using. User already exists. So back to the workflows here. Since the user count was greater than zero, there's one user called Sam at test.com in the database. It was using this workflow as opposed to this workflow here. So that is basically how you go and set up your app so that you can go and create users on behalf of somebody else, send them an email to invite them in your app, and then on the first time that they go and um, log in, Actually, let's just go and do that. I'll show you. So this user, Sam, we've already logged him in, and he had to go through and change the password. So now Sam is there. Sam is automatically logged in. And that is how you go and set up the app so that you can go again and send an uh, invite to other and have them come into your app to go and confirm their password or reset their password and then they're into your app again if you like this video give me a thumbs up i do appreciate that and subscribe so you get notified on upcoming videos thanks